Hi, and welcome to your 20th iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic countdown slash stopwatch application. There will just be a label on the screen, and every one second, the number on the label will decrease. Essentially, it'll just be a very basic stopwatch or timer. It's really easy to reverse. So, if you've got a, it set to be a countdown uh, timer, it will go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Or if it's a stopwatch, it will go in reverse and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. So, let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. For this tutorial, I'll just be creating a single view application. So, click on single view application and then click next. For the product name, I'll just call mine timer. Slow, uh, I'll just call mine timer, but you can call yours whatever you want. Again, the organization name, company identifier, bundle identifier, class prefix, and devices are all up to you, and it makes no difference in our actual coding today. So then click Next, and then click Create. Now, let's begin in our storyboard by adding a label for the countdown, and then we might also create one for the stopwatch, although we could just change them in the code. So first, drag in a label onto your view. If you cannot see this objects panel down here, make sure that you have selected the objects panel in the top right corner, and make sure that you have dragged up the objects. Now, let's change the uh, label size, or the height of the text, by uh, just clicking on the up button, just to make it a bit bigger, seeing that we'll only be displaying a one digit or two digit number. Worst case scenario, there'll be three digits, so let's just type in the number 999 to make sure that it fits. It does, so we can make the label's text a bit bigger still. Okay, so we've now got our label. Now, let's now add a button that will uh, just say, Start Timer. We'll first create our stopwatch, and then after that I'll show you how to create the countdown timer. Now go into your assistant editor by clicking on the tuxedo icon near the top right corner. Make sure that automatic is selected, and then view controller.h. After the add interface line, add a, an opening curly bracket and then press enter. Xcode will insert, as always, the closing curly bracket. Now click on your label, or right click and drag on the label, in between the two curly brackets. Make sure the connection is outlet type UI label and storage strong, and we'll just call this uh, label time. And then click connect. Then let's create an action for our start timer by clicking and then dragging once again, but this time below the closing curly bracket, and changing the connection from outlet to action. Let's call this start timer. Make sure type is ID, event touch up inside, and argument sender, and then click connect. I'll explain all this code at the end of the tutorial. Back in the single view uh, editor, let's go into our viewcontroller.m and start adding the code to run the timer. So what we need to do here is create the timer in our IB action. What the timer will do is every set amount of time, it will run an action. I'll explain all, that, uh, all of that in a moment. Let's under our add impl uh, actually let's for now, in the IB action, type ns timer, and we'll just do asterisk timer equals, and then we need to set its value. So, we'll just do equals, square bracket, ns timer, scheduled timer with interval. You want to choose the second one, the one that has an ns time interval, a target selector, and so on. So, I double click on that. Now, close the square bracket and add a semicolon. In scheduled timer with interval, type 1.0. In target, type self. In selector, type at selector. And then leave selector blank, but uh, it should be at selector, opening bracket, and then closing bracket. User info, info in the ID field, type nil in lowercase, and repeats, type yes. Now, what that's going to do is, every one second, it's going to run whatever action we put in here. To create that action, let's just underneath our IB action, outside of the curly bracket, but above at n, type dash void, and we'll just call it tick, and then add an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. Now where it says at selected, type tick. So what that is doing is every one second, uh, and it's going to do every one second, and because we've got repeats to set, set to yes, if we didn't have repeats set to yes, then it would just happen... After one second, the action will run, and then that will be it. 
But because we have it set to repeats, yes, then every one second it's going to run whatever code we put inside our tick method, because that is the selector. So inside our tick method, we need to first create a number, and then we need to make that number one less than it was before, and then we need to set the label's text to be that number. Or actually, we want it to be one more than before because we're creating a stopwatch. So under the at implementation line at the top of your viewcontroller.m, type int, and then type, uh, we'll just call it time tick. And then add a semicolon. Now inside our tick method, we can type time tick plus plus semicolon, and then we can do ns string, and we'll just call this time string equals two square brackets ns string alloc in it with format and just the first one that just has an ns string as this argument then type at talking mark talking mark close the square bracket and add a semicolon inside the at talking mark talking mark type percentage at our uh, percentage d sorry and then outside of the talking mark type comma and then type time tick then all we need to finally do is type Label time dot text equals time string. Now all that is doing is every one second we're running this code here. This code here is saying make time tick one less than before, then create some text which and the text will just be time tick, and then set our labels text to be this time string. Now at the top we need to add one more thing which is where we've got int time tick, type int time tick equals and then um, we can if we were doing it to countdown we could do that there. We don't need to though, sorry. So we could set it to be zero though. So let's make it int time tick equals zero. And that will mean that on the first time that this runs, so after one second, time tick plus plus, which means time tick add one to it. So zero plus one, so it will be equal to one. Then we've got our string, which is equal to whatever time tick is equal to. So time tick is now one, so this is now one. And then we're setting our labels text, so just the label what it says to be equal to this, which is now equal to 1. The reason we don't, can't just type label time dot text equals time tick is because label time dot text is an NS string, or it, it's formatted as text. So you, uh, and in programming, you can't say, well, you can't specify a number for where you want text. You have to specify some other text. So we're just converting here pretty much this number, or this int, of the uh, time left, or the time that's been uh, stopwatched, and we're converting that to a string so that we can display it in our label. Let's now run the application and let's see if it works. It should run without any bugs. Although you may get one warning about the NS timer. But don't worry about that. It's just because Xco thinks we haven't used the timer. And we'll correct that after. Now, once the application is running on our phone, let's click Start Timer. So now I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, every one second going up. Now there is a couple of issues here. Firstly, it started at 999. Let's first correct that. So in void view did load, all you need to do is type label time dot text equals at talking mark 0, talking mark semicolon. So that just means as soon as the application loads up and this view is loading up in the background, where while the view the view's loading and doing all of its loading stuff, while the view is doing all of its loading, we're just setting the label's text to be zero, so that once the view appears, the label's going to say zero rather than 999. Another issue we had, if we go back to our iOS simulator, is that the label is sort of a bit aligned to the left. So go back to main.storyboard, click on your label, and then for alignment, center it. It's a small thing, but it makes it look a bit better. Finally, an issue you probably didn't notice. Right now, it's counting every one second, and you can see that very clearly. If I click Start Timer again, it's going to speed up. Now, every one second, it will actually go up by two. And the more I click it, the faster the timer gets. So what we need to do is we need to, every time you click Start Timer, we need to stop the timer before running it again. Otherwise, what's happening is, pretty much every time we click Start Timer, every one second, this action is being run. So the first time we click it, this action's run once every one second. Then the second time, NS time is created all over again. So it's now running twice. There's two NS timers going, changing at exactly the same time. So this is now being called twice every second. So what we need to first do is go... Uh, what we need to do is we first need to control command x NS timer timer. 
and paste that under int time tick at the very top, then under semicolon. Then now where it just has an equal sign, type timer equals. And then at the top, type timer invalidate. And then add a squ closing square bracket and semicolon. Let me quickly explain what we're doing here. We're making the NS timer a global variable, so that before we even create the timer, we can uh, do things with the timer, such as stop it. It also means that we can stop the timer when we quit the application, so that when the user then goes back into the application, it isn't running at double speed again. So that pretty, just me pretty much just means that within all of this code, we can use timer, not just within this IB action. So when we click on the button, we're stopping the timer, which is timer invalidate. Invalidate pretty much just means stop the timer. So we're stopping the timer, and then we're starting it again. So that means that if I were to before, I could have just clicked start timer, and the timer would have started. I could click it again, and this timer would have started twice, and so on. Now if I click it once, the timer starts. If I click it again, that current timer stops, and then the new one starts. And then again, we haven't changed anything in our tick method. Let's run the application again, and it now should work without any flaws. So we start at zero, as we set in our view to load. If I click start timer, you can see all the text is centered. One, two, three, and so on. If I click start timer a lot, nothing happens. It still goes every one second. It doesn't do as before by speeding up. So now, for those of you interested, I'll now show you quickly how to create a countdown timer. We barely need to modify any code. All we need to do is where we've got int time tick equals zero, set it to what be whatever you want the tick to be from, uh, the countdown to be from. So if I want a five second countdown, five, four, three, two, one, I'll just set this to be five. Then where we've got void tick, let's do time tick minus minus instead of plus plus. So that pretty much just means time tick, which is the amount of time that's passed, is one less than it was before. Run the application again, and now you should see a countdown timer. You'll notice though that although we've sent int time tick to be five, label time.txt hasn't changed. To fix this, rather than typing in five here, let's set it up properly by going equals two square brackets ns string ns string alloc in it with format and then as we did before percentage d comma time tick and then add a square bracket all that's doing is this, all of this code here is run before this code so we say time tick equals five and then we're just setting the labels text to be equal to time tick so i'll run the application again and as you can see we start at five and i'll click start timer and it counts down five, four, three, two, one, zero. But now look what happens. Now it's going into negative numbers. What we probably want, and you may not want this, but if you do want it to stop when it gets to zero, all we need to do is put some code in our void tick. Type if time tick equals equals zero, then timer invalidate. Else, and then you just type else, open square bracket, but don't press enter. And then after our label time.txt, add an enter. Then, now, although it's just a small thing, let's just make all this code lined up. So to do that, we can just go select void tick, zoom out a bit, and then you just click on the help menu and click type re space indent. Then click on menu items structure re indent. Should now have lined this all up properly. So, what's this code doing? Well, time tick is the amount of time that's gone. So if time tick equals zero, that means that our label is going to be zero. So the timer has got to zero. If the timer has got to zero, let's stop the timer and do nothing else. So here we're just stopping the timer. We could also set our label back to five. So let's do that as well. And also set in time tick back to five. So you just type time tick equals five and then copy the line in view did load. So now what we're doing is we're going... If we're out of time, so times equals to zero, stop the timer, and then reset everything else back to where it was at the start. If it does not equal zero, so it equals five, four, three, two, or one, then just subtract one, and then display the text as if we were normally counting down. Run the application now, and hopefully what will happen is the timer, when it gets to zero, will just go back to five and stop. So click on start timer and watch it count down, and as it hits zero, Yep, we go back to 5, and then that stops. And if I start timer again, it works again, it'll go back to 0, and then reset itself. So, that's how to create a basic timer, or stopwatch application, in iOS.
all that we are actually doing is using an ns timer and then subtracting um, an int uh, or a name where every one second subtracting a number and then we're displaying that in a label it's that simple in our next tutorial I'll show you using exactly this line of code here how you can in fact delay actions for example you might want one second after someone clicks a button on your application to do something rather than straight away and it's really easy in fact you pretty much just said uh, repeats yes to repeats no and then just put the code you want to do in a delayed action inside our void tick method but I will do that in another tutorial for those of you who aren't quite sure of how to do it yourself so if you've enjoyed this tutorial be sure to like and subscribe to see more videos and if you've got any questions feel free to message us through YouTube comment on this video or visit our website or Facebook page our website is 99centsappdevelopment.com